What's good YouTube? Welcome to the channel. My name is Dylan and this is my review for the Kobo Ellipsa. So when I first heard about the Kobo Ellipsa back in May, I knew I had to get my hands on it because it just sounded so cool. So I reached out to our friends at Kobo to see if we could do anything. This video is not sponsored, but they were kind enough to lend me a loaner device. And I've had the Ellipsa for about two weeks now and I can talk about this thing for forever. In an attempt to not overwhelm you with too much information, I decided to break this video down into three parts. First, we're gonna just talk about the device in general, and then we'll go into its functionality of it as an e-reader, then as a notebook, and after that, just like a quick summary of like who could use it and what it's best for. So without further ado, let's get into it. So for those of you that don't know, this is the Kobo Ellipsa. This is Kobo's latest device, and it's basically an e-notebook. What that means is, is that you get to write on it while you read books, and you can make notebooks. That's the main reason why I was so attracted to it because I've always seen people that write in their books and I've wanted to be that person but I don't want to damage my physical books so being able to write inside a digital book makes me feel a lot better because you know there will always be a pristine version of the book available so the way that Kobo sells this device it always comes in a pack it comes with the device itself it comes with the little sleep cover and it comes with the Kobo stylus so for the Kobo Ellipsa itself it comes in a 10.3 inch e ink screen with 227 ppi which just basically means that it kind of reads like paper when you're looking at the device it's actually less specs than the clara hd which is 300 ppi but honestly i can't tell the difference another thing is in the last video that i had there was a lot of glare and that's because i added a screen protector so this is the ellipsa without a screen protector and as you can see it really doesn't have any glare when the sun hits it they still feel the same it's got that like matte little finish to it so when you do write with it on a stylus or when you're flipping the pages, it's just got a nicer feeling to it rather than a glass screen. Something that I noticed on this device, while you can adjust the light, they don't have the Comfort Light Pro that they had in the Clara HD, which just basically means you can adjust the backlight to be like white or yellow. I'm okay with it because it's not like you're gonna be like writing notes on bed, but if you do, you probably have your, what's that called? A night lamp on, but if you do need to do it, it is doable. As for the inputs and outputs, you just got a power button on the right side, the power LED and a USB-C port and that's used for charging and transferring files. The storage of this device is 32 gigabytes which means you can store quite a bit of books. If I were to use this it would be great for reading textbooks because that's what I've always wanted in undergrad. Uh, we've been out of school for a while. I don't know how large textbooks would be. Let me know if you think 32 gigabytes will be enough to store your textbooks. If so this would be a great option for that. They still have that pocket and Kobo integration on this device which is pretty awesome um, but something new that they've added is actually Dropbox integration which means that you can sync your files with the cloud. The Kobo Ellipsa has a 2400 milliamp hour battery. This lasted two weeks for me while I was writing on it and stuff um, before I needed to charge it. As for the build quality of this device, it's pretty awesome. The back is actually the most differentiating feature. Usually they have like this like rigid pattern looking thing in the back, but for the Ellipsa, they've made it a really nice like matte smooth plastic kind of thing. It's also got rubber feet on the bottom. So if you were to write, it prevents it from rocking and making too much noise, which is a nice feature to have, but most of the time I have it in the case anyways. So the other things that come into the pack is also the sleep cover and the sleep cover is awesome because basically when you close it, it goes to sleep and it'll help conserve battery that way. And when you open it up, it just turns on the device and you're ready to go to take notes, read your book or continue doing whatever you were doing previously. Something to mention is that the sleep cover only come in this blue color, but as long as you like blue, you should be all right. I like that you can fold the case so that it leans on a maybe like a 15 degree angle. It helps with the writing, it helps with reading. As it is magnetic, it's detachable off of the case, which is good. Uh, and the off chance that you don't want the sleep cover and you just want to read it like a book or a magazine it reduces about a third of the weight and that way you know your device is protected but you still have this cover on it the sleep cover is really cool because they actually created a compartment for your pen and i find this actually super convenient because it's a physical holder for your pen in comparison with the other tablets like an ipad if you were to put the ipad in your bag you kind of lose the pen it is the most stressful thing when you go to somewhere and you can't find your stylus so having that is really awesome as for the stylus it's got like a metallic build it's powered by a 4a battery i'm pretty familiar with these styluses because this feels a lot like the microsoft surface pro stylus picking it up just felt like second nature it has the same setup features. It's basically got the erase button and the highlight button. Um, it's got like that rubber stylus tip thing, which feels really good to write on because it's pretty precise. It goes down pretty smooth. It feels like a pencil when you write it down. However, from my experience with this and showing people this device, these pens tend to not agree with every type of writer. If you tend to hold your pencil higher, you just have to basically
basically avoid pressing these buttons while you write because it does create some issues when you take notes. It's a really good price point because you get everything you need to start running with a e-notebook at its full functionality. Using the Kobo Ellipsa as an actual e-reader is pretty awesome because it's basically the size of a magazine. I know that when you're traveling and stuff, this isn't the most ideal size to have, but when you're reading like workbooks, it's nice to actually have something this large because if you were to make notes or highlight things, it is a lot easier to do. I like that it just rotates any which way that you want. So if you wanted to read a wider screen or if you were left-handed, you could put the bezel on the left side. That way it's easier for you to hold while you're reading. Obviously you can lock it if required. But overall, Kobo makes amazing e-readers. Like I said in my last video, the reason why I chose Kobo over any other brand is because it natively supports pretty much any single file that you can think of, whether it be EPUBs, PDF, and you can upload now via Dropbox, which is even better. Obviously, they still have the Kobo store with that all you can read for $9.99 a month. And my favorite feature is that Kobo is like the only device that allows you to sync with OverDrive, meaning that you can access public libraries in Canada, which is amazing. I remember a lot of you guys enjoy reading comic books, so it supports CBR and Mobi files. You can double tap, you can pinch to zoom, and as you can see, it refreshes a little bit every time you move the page. For ease of reading, I didn't zoom in at all because it just looks fine as it is, because it is a pretty large screen. I think writing on books are only supported for EPUBs and PDF. I've tried doing it on the other files and it doesn't seem to work, but EPUBs are amazing to read with the Kobo because you can basically resize the text, the line spacing, the margins, and that's especially amazing for the Ellipsa because now that you can write in your eBooks, what I found to be the most useful is actually creating really large margins in your books. That way you can write notes in the margin without having to interfere with the text on screen. One thing that I have to say about writing on books on the Ellipsa is that you don't have the functionality of changing pen sizes. And unfortunately, if you have larger handwriting like I do, you are limited on space, so you have to write pretty small. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've mainly just been swiping to turn pages, and that's because I write pretty heavy, so when I make notes on books, my palm hits the screen before the stylus does, and that's caused me to lose a lot of notes because it's basically writing and then it'll skip to the next page. Uh, and to avoid that, all I've been doing is going into the reading settings and changing the turning pages to swiping only. However, written notes only appear on the Kobo itself. I can't figure out how to export notes with the EPUBs. Uh, given that this is a loaner device, it's a little sad because I don't know how I'm going to be able to keep everything that I've written. But if you make notes via text only and not the stylus, there is a workaround. You just basically find this piece of code that you upload onto your Kobo. And that way, when you click the options on the book, you'll be able to see that you can export annotations. This is a workaround. I don't know if this is supported by Kobo software, so you have to use it at your own risk, but I can link some articles in the description down below on how to do that. I was trying to figure out what other functionalities there would be to be able to write on books, and I came up with were worksheets, textbooks, marking up files, signing documents, like basically anything that you would write on a PDF, this is great for. The reason being is because the PDF syncs so well with Dropbox that all of the changes that you make on the Kobo will instantly show up on the Dropbox. One thing that I do have to mention though is if you were to make edits on your computer with an app like Preview for the MacBook, those edits don't transfer over to the Kobo Ellipsa. I'm not sure why that is, but the workaround for that is using the Adobe Reader so you can actually see the notes and edits that you make with that. As an example, I've uploaded my digital planner onto the Kobo Ellipsa and it's pretty awesome to see that I can write on this PDF as if I were writing on actual paper. But other than that, I think that because you can upload to Dropbox, it's really awesome to be able to have it between all your devices. But obviously, when you have a stylus and a writable device, it would be nice to know how the notebooks work. So Kobo Ellipsa actually does have a notebook section where you can create two types of notebooks. You have the basic notebook and the advanced notebook. With the basic notebook, you're basically given a graph sheet of paper and a bunch of different pens to choose from. This is what I meant when I said that it was unfortunate that you couldn't choose the pen size when editing on your eBooks because they clearly have the technology to let you sort between different pen sizes and different shades of color. Uh, so that's unfortunate that these features aren't in EPUBs or PDFs, but I'm sure that could be fixed with a future update. You can export files pretty easily. You can export this by specific pages or the entire notebook that you've created as a PDF, a PNG or JPEG and you can export it via USB-C or via Dropbox, which is mainly what I've been doing because 
it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to connect anything and it does it pretty instantly. The advanced notebook is definitely where they spent most of their time developing features. When you open up a new advanced notebook, you're basically given a bunch of lines. You write on them and you can double tap to convert it to actual text, provided that your writing is legible. Mine is kind of, and it still works, which is great. They have some built-in features so that if you're writing a lot, you can adjust it. If basically, if you swipe down, you're creating a space or a new line in the word. If you swipe up along the words, you're basically deleting a space, and then if you write horizontally, you're basically deleting those words. If you want more precise editing, you can double tap the words so they become bigger. And then you can adjust everything within here using those same features. The only thing is when you touch the text, it doesn't bring up the keyboard and you can't really adjust any of the text in there. So the things about the notebooks are they are specifically only made for the stylus, but I hope this is something that they can change in a future update because obviously it would be easier to adjust text with a keyboard if you're handwriting isn't working the way you want it to. Other features they have in the advanced notebooks are basically inserting drawings, diagrams, math equations, and a freeform section. The main thing with insert a drawing is basically you get a section of the basic notebook in here. You and that's pretty awesome to be able to have all of those functions in the basic notebook inside the advanced notebook, because once you select the type of notebook, you can't change in between them. Inserting a diagram is also pretty cool. I didn't really understand what this feature was for, but if you were basically making simple flow charts, it's really easy to do. It basically converts the shapes that you draw, the text that you write, and that way it can create simple diagrams for you to understand. I tried to overcomplicate things by drawing like a feedback loop or something. It can't handle that too much or a circuit diagram. Uh, so it's not for complex diagrams, but for simple stuff, it definitely works. Next up, we have math equations. I tried to see how far I could push this thing. It can't handle complex numbers too well. If you throw in units in your equations, it doesn't know what to do with it. But if you stick to normal numbers, it can handle quite a bit of things. So for the notebooks, as long as you're keeping it simple um, and easy to understand, this is a great option for you to have because rather than having to stare at a screen all the time, it's nice to have this display that works kind of like paper and a pen. One thing I did notice is I was using the notebooks a lot, so my files got pretty big. And when you click on them, they tend to take a while to open. Uh, so if you are making last minute notes in class, it's important to load things prior uh, to make sure that you can access your notebooks when needed. Another thing with these notebooks is there's no search function. So you kind of have to remember where you place things on the notebooks or you'd have to create a lot of smaller notebooks so that they open up faster. So who this device is for are people that are like e-reader enthusiasts. They love books, they love digital files. This is a great device for that. It is the most affordable e-notebook that I know of. Um, it's easily accessible. It's at stores that you can actually go into physically handle and see. If you have most of your devices and you are looking for something to read textbooks with that won't hurt your eyes, this is a great option for like back to school or even just like work documents if you have to read a lot of PDFs. This is a lot better for your eyes than reading on a regular screen. Personally, I love this device. I love writing on books because I've always wanted to, but I think there's something in my brain that won't let me write on a physical book. But being able to write on a digital book has been amazing because you can make notes everywhere you want on the book. There are a few quirks you have to get used to, but they all have workarounds to them. Overall, the Ellipsa has been a great device. I've loved using this and I want to keep testing it more. I'm not sure how much longer I can have this. So if you have any questions, comment those down below and I'll try to address them as quick as possible. I've also written a detailed blog post if you want to read more about that I'll put those in the description down below but other than that thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one bye guys